morning, whilst filming at this gigantic car factory, it's all about trains. The one we're talking about is actually down there. Cameramen are getting focus up on it ready because there's nobody in it, but it's about to drive to here. It's remote controlled by that man there with that box. It's like the world's biggest train set, literally. Good news is, I think I'm going to get to have a go. Like that, but me driving it. I've told you I've never done that. I never even had a train set. One of the things I never thought through when I set out to make this show was that when you're looking at big stuff, often you have to put on, you know, safety gear, dressing up. This particular get-up pretty much takes the biscuit. It's a lot of man-made fibres. I am a fire hazard. I'm visible, but heating up rapidly, and these gloves are, well, I could, they're sleeping bags. Another day, another hard hat. I am visible. in the desert outside Dubai as you can see and this is the kind of desert you used to draw as a kid soft sandy dunes all of that and uh, in order to explore and explain skin friction and how you build the foundations of the world's tallest building on sand I've been joined by Bill who is the engineer designer behind it and we have got to tear around this desert in a dune buggy like the one going past right now the only difference is Bill and I in our buggy we're doing science Bill and I are going to conduct an experiment using these two old telephone directories. And what we're going to do is interleave them page by page. There's no glue holding these together, they're just interleaved. And I think let's have a little tug of war. Go. Grief! <laughs> I think we need to up the effort a bit, introduce some more force. It's 1-0 to friction so far, but maybe we can even the score with the help of two dune buggies and 344 horsepower. Before we begin this massive scientific event, my prediction is that actually the skin friction will hold, the pages won't come undone, and that the books will give it the spine and the big heavy brackets will fly free. Probably some of us will survive. My prediction is that the phone, phone books will win and that uh, we won't be able to pull them apart. Okay, Bill, in three, two, one, begin. We are now having a tug of war. We are held only by friction. Come on, this is a mighty off-road racer. Bill, I think the book's won. Well, our experiment is over, and uh, well, first of all, friction won. More impressively still, um, the whole ensemble managed to defeat one of the cars. It's buried itself and it won't start. Friction, it's really, really strong. I want to show you something. This is how we're not normally looked at. This is our kit room for the shoot here at the Burj Khalifa. We've got this space all to ourselves, we can eat in here, we can download footage in here, keep our kit in here, we can do whatever they're pretending to do in here. Normally, this would be in the basement somewhere. Here, we're on the 112th floor, and we're barely halfway up the building. And this is all our space. It's a life of luxury. <laughs> I don't like it, it's gonna spoil them. They'll come to expect this in the next location. They'll be back to a shed in the basement. Also, all of a sudden, Usually, our lunch is well, whatever you can grab from the petrol station as you go by. 112 floors up. Look, these are big buildings and they look small from here. There's what? Well, it goes up to 163 floors. But then beyond that, that's nowhere near the top. The pinnacle, the spire on top of that, which you'll see in the show, we're going up. It means this is barely halfway here. Look at it. Who knew the connection between the world's tallest building and a huge dam would be water pressure? But it totally is. The dam is all about containing and managing pressure. It's 192 meters tall. That's 192 meters of water exerting pressure on the bottom. We saw what happens when they open the pressure release valve. With water coming out under that pressure. Water, if it started at the top of this, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, would be travelling four times the distance. 
it would be four times the pressure we saw at the pressure relief valve at the dam. That's mind blowing. And how engineers solve that problem, you can see oddly enough in my show all about it. It's actually day one of filming here at the Burj Khalifa, but for logistical reasons, we're having to film a scene that comes a bit further down, which is when me and my guide, well, basically, I've got to go over the edge. We're talking about the window cleaning, and astonishingly, despite all the astonishing tech, the best way to clean the windows is for blokes on ropes to go down the outside of the building. It takes three months to do the whole building, and then they just start again. So every window is cleaned four times a year. But the idea is I rope up and go over the edge with them. I'm standing here thinking, am I going to be able to or will I bottle it? I honestly, right now, don't know. All these people got excited and happy to be on ropes. I'm not. Most of the guys who do the window cleaning here are Nepalese from Nepal, because they're really good with heights, because they're rock, big mountains. So they're, there's this, <laughs> standing on the rail, it's fine. It's a horrible feeling when you don't know if you're going to be able to do something. I don't know. If in this show there is a sequence in which I upside down the side, clean the windows, I did it. If there isn't, I bottled it and now you know. I have to look at it because I'm on this side of the camera and every time I look at it, you're there as a director looking the other way with that stupid hat on. There? No. It's all because I showed Graham a photograph of him wearing the see-through safety hats which my office provided and we still don't know why he thought this was a good idea. If you've ever wondered what your hair looks like when it's under a hat, which as I said to the guys, it's things you don't need to see. That is the milliner equivalent of sitting on the photocopier at the Christmas party. <laughs> you don't want to see that. How things look for real. <laughs> yep, we're working hard. I'm trying to suppress my excitement. Just been at the very front, very place where they are. They're not drilling, they're blasting, and they let me load the explosive, which is literally like a long tube, like you see in a cowboy movie, and then I wrapped it into the hole with a stick. It was really brave and manly. I was terrified. I am. It's cool, though, isn't it? All this tech. And they're still just blasting rock with explosives. I played it really cool. Yeah. I didn't. You'll see. Everybody ready? Doing this job, it's not uncommon to be given the opportunity to do unusual things. And normally you go, oh yeah, that was really special. But that really was a strange feeling, hitting that button and, well, the earth moved and a bit of it fell off. It was amazing. I'm gonna play it cool now. That was very cool. This vast space through here, this whole cavern, they put a cement factory in here so they don't have to put one up top because obviously this whole thing is about building a tunnel to preserve and protect the Alps. But I've just discovered, and I'm going to talk to Giorgio, who's in charge here, that apparently they fill them in afterwards. So when the tunnels are built, this is filled in. I mean, look at it. The cathedral underground. Fill it back in, don't need it. I am horrifically excited because up there, it's a tunnel boring machine. We're going to go and do some talking to camera about it and explore it in a minute. And it's something I've always wanted to see. It's on my list of things to see along with baobab trees and one of these. There was a film called, I think it's The Earth's Core. It was a Peter Cushing movie in 1976. I saw it as a little kid and it featured a machine that he built, this Victorian guy that drills into the earth. And I wanted one more than anything else. I've built it out of Lego so many times. And this is, well, this is a real one. And if you want a tree, this graphic is it. This is the, this is the end where it drills, yeah? And then it goes along here. This is where they're laying this road that we're standing on behind it and all the concrete on the roof. It's just a gigantic moving factory that braces against the sides of the tunnel it dig and just pushes its way through it. Brilliant. Always wanted to see one. And there it is. It is big. Chuffing massive is another way of putting it. We've given the director the other side of these palms and he just will not keep it stuck to his ear so he can talk to me and him. Graham, have you got it in your ear? 
<laughs> you give a director any sort of communication device, unless they're talking, they're not interested in it. Graham, I'm slagging you off to the behind the scenes camera, so whenever you're ready, I'll keep going. <laughs> the, the behind the scenes camera? Yeah. I said we give the, give the director any piece of kit, a monitor, he or she drops it immediately, and any form of communication, they're only interested in it when they're broadcasting. They're not interested in receiving. How am I breaking up really? Am I? Sorry, ready, here I come. Two, one! Right, we are at zero hours minus a few seconds. Big is about to start on Discovery. These are the boys and girls that made the thing. Uh, it's been an incredible journey getting here. I'd like to say well done to all of you. Thank you. And now it begins. Enjoy. Let's know what you think. Cheers! <laughs>